7,515 pounds, Wildwood V-Bud coming in to us here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And if you're not sure, do I get the one slide camper? Do I get the two slide camper? Uh, what, you know, what kind, do we get theater? Do we get this or that? This is the one that gives you the function of a two slide RV in one RV. It gives you a cargo bunk garage. It gives you seating and bunk furniture configurations that can be reconfigured within seconds on the fly. So two different people could buy this same camper for wildly different purposes and applications. It is what I call Swiss Army Camper. It only does everything. Now, maybe you're familiar with the Versa Lounge and the Versa Bunk, and that's great. If you're not, if you're joining us here at Halet RV and seeing these for the first time, you are in for a treat. They are absolutely awesome. So you're going, so, you know, what's what's the big deal? This has a U-Dinette over here, like a lot of campers, and has a sofa over here, like a lot of campers. Well, the magic begins with the, the dinette back that is shared against the sofa side, because the cool part about it is, it's removable. It doesn't have to stay there. Because step one in this thing, if you flip that dinette back around and you kind of just reshuffle those cushions a bit, which is exactly what it's intended to do, you suddenly create this big, like, L lounge napping couch. And if you just, you know, you really want to stretch out on a rainy day, something like that, you can. And you can see how we've got the rolled down nightshades really blocking out these panoramic windows when and if you need that kind of coverage. But what's really cool is the back side of those shades is a really bright white color to help reflect sunshine so it's not absorbed into the RV. But the cool part about this is you don't really, you don't lose the dinette. You just kind of reshape it into a small little, you know, L lounge. And especially with what you're going to see in the bunk room, I think a range like this during the day is exactly how you're going to want to see this thing. This is probably how you're going to leave it most of the time, frankly. But if need be, if you just got to sleep an army in this thing, or if you've got tall, long people, or tall, long cargo, this is a, a really interesting thing because that dinette back gets out of the way, the whole thing folds down into one super slide, like, mega bed, basically. There's nothing else like this. This is pretty awesome. But what's crazy is we are still not done because Wildwood has another little hidden surprise in here. They include five of these food safe stackable tote containers in every Versa Lounge in a full blood Wildwood. Now this floor plan has uh, other storage throughout the RV uh, that we haven't even got to yet. To give you a point of reference, the big uh, compressor refrigerator in this is 10.7 cubic feet. You can nearly fit two of those refrigerators in the total, uh, you know, size of all of these totes put together. That's a lot of stuff. Now, you want to know a really cool thing to do, especially in a bunk model like this? What you do is you dedicate each of these totes, say, to one of the occupants of the camper, whether it's mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, you know, little Billy, little Susie, whoever. And what you do is you, you put the kids' clothes on their bed. And then you say, okay, I want you to go upstairs and all the clothes and all the stuff on your bed, I want you to put that in this tote and then bring it back to mom or dad or whoever. And the kids can actually help get involved in packing the camper too. So there's, there's a lot of ways you can use these, a lot of benefit to it. And if you straight don't care, if you don't want them, they, they ain't bolted to the floor. They're not built into drawers. Take them out, use them in the garage. And something else I really noticed here is just, uh, I, I love the extra little details they're putting in on these now. The little quilting on the seating, the, the little accent line on this, and then just the clean execution and detail. Like, if you lift that up, you don't see raw construction anywhere. Oh, by the way, um, under the uh, dinette here, the rear bench also basically has storage space. And I'll tell you why I like that open instead of closed off right there, because when it's closed off, it's hard to get to. When it's open, I can shove stuff under there, no sweat, like another tote if I wanted to. But when I sit down, like at a, a seat like this, I like to curl my legs under me, and I can't do that like over here on the left, but I can do it on the rear bench. I just, I like to have that option and opportunity. You'll find that all of the countertops in this are that sealed edge thermal foil material. And did you notice the little accent light above this slide here? 
Notice how it's not traditional RV industry disco blue. Instead, it's just a nice, clean, white light. It's actually pretty easy to miss. We actually, someone was so not used to seeing white lights above slides last year, they actually came in uh, to our showroom and uh, grabbed a salesperson on a rainy day goes, hey, you got a real problem. There's daylight coming in through a slide out there. We're like, what are you talking about? Well, we had a Wildwood pulled up and plugged in, and the light was on, and they thought it was daylight coming through because they couldn't believe a manufacturer would actually just use white lighting. It, unfortunately, is kind of uncommon. Uh, so what else does this thing have besides just the Versa Lounge and a cool light? Well, up top here, you have a taller ceiling, like a Catalina, like a J-Flight. This has a 6'9 interior, and that extra 3 inches gives us taller cabinets, shower, bigger slides, all kinds of benefits. Now, another thing on these that's really cool is they're not using uh, the, like, just seam tape where wall panels or roof panels meet. It's actually a click-in-place uh, printed uh, T-mold. So it clicks in place so that heat can't just cause it to uh, peel off and curl like an old tape potentially could. And it's those kind of extra little details I see go into Wildwoods that I really like here. Now, normally I would cover the kitchen coming from the other direction, but I think we're going to get a better look at it as long as I start by swinging around this way right here and taking a look at that huge wastebasket space. Now, the camper is not level currently, so that door wants to shut. So pardon me for using the roll-away dish drying rack that normably goes above the uh, sink to uh, a bluv. I, I, it's hot. I might be a little dehydrated. This might not be my smoothest video, although I don't know many that really are. But you get the point. Big space here for big waste basket. Always a handy feature. And as Paul Harvey would say, and now for the rest of the story. Inside the uh, next door, we've got triple pull-out plywood boxed extension drawers for, you know, forks, spoons, knives, all the good stuff. We already talked about the sealed edge counter. I love the peninsula L shape of this because if you are using the sink and using the stove, you still need a place to put things. And that's what this allows for. Notice some easy reach outlets and a nice bank of them right here also. So you could easily convert this to like appliance corner, coffee maker corner, or like phone charger corner, you know, all kinds of things. The taller ceiling allows them to put uh, shelves in their overhead cabinetry to maximize the space there, although that's something that the X-Lite Wildwoods also do very well uh, too. Past the 10.7 uh, cubic foot compressor fridge, Wildwood using the Everchill variety, Wildwood was the first uh, mainstream manufacturer to standardize uh, a 12 volt fridge like this. They were really the ones that pushed the envelope and then, you know, in, uh, basically force brands like, you know, Cherokee, you now Catalina, J-Flight, everybody, Rockwood, everybody to keep pace with them. Wildwood really led the charge on that. Now, what I like about this, that's some serious pantry space. It's deep. It's wide. You can get to it. But they left just enough space here. If you wanted to put a broom hanger, you could tuck the broom head down in there. And this could also be a handy broom closet. And what's also nice is it does have its own dedicated light. So what mom and dad, what you're going to do is after you have a bag of frozen veggies, I want you to clean the bag, empty the bag, dry the bag. Inside out works great. And you're going, why am I doing this? Because what you're going to do is put things like Snickers bars that you want, but the kids always eat. And you're going to put them up here. So the kids are going to see a bag full of peas and they're not going to realize why is it up here instead of in the freezer being frozen. And now you can have a Snickers bar whenever you like, or keep them in the freezer if you do enjoy frozen Snickers, which frankly is pretty darn tasty too. Now, enough of the kitchen, enough, enough of my history. Back to the bunk room. What's great here, sliding door, and it does have a magnet plate right there. So when it is time to put the kiddos down or the guests need some privacy space or whatever, this is, uh, this is just awesome. Now, with those windows in the bunk room, because they've got lots of windows, it was letting in a flood of light pollution. It was really washing out the colors on the camera here. This is a better uh, realization of what the camper looks like. It is sharp in here. Now, there are not different decors. This is it. A lot of brands have gone one decor. Cherokee started doing that a few years ago, and you're watching more and more and more brands go to only one or two decors. Now, back here. We've seen uh, the uh, Versa sofa. We have seen, rather. We've seen, ugh. But now we're going to get a look at the Versa bunk. So you can see you've got that cargo bunk door. You'll get a better idea of that outside. You've got TV hookups here, USB plugs. And another thing about this, kind of like that mega super sofa, you can sleep big kids and adults eight foot long across that top bed. Of course, you have a normal bunk over here. 
you've got these big windows that open for airflow, more USB plugs, and something I like, lights out, kids. Go to bed. All the lights in the ceiling operate on that switch, but they are still individually click controllable. And here's something else. Instead of a bunk, this has a camp queen bed. This, this has two queen beds in it. So this floor plan gives you some opportunities most trailers just don't and can't. So this model gives us the opportunity for a two bedroom camper. You don't have to have those bunks down. Now they do block a little bit of the window, but I think a lot of people draw the shades on those all the time anyway. I'm not saying it's the perfect solution. I'm saying that it can be functional. So if you have someone like say a mother-in-law or someone staying with you for a weekend, but not all the time, or maybe your grandpa and grandma and sometimes just the grandkids and sometimes your kids and the grandkids show up. This is a really flexible uh, solution here where one camper can perform the concepts of multiple trailers without you needing to make multiple purchases, which obviously is very expensive. But we're still not done Surprise. because the VersaBunk can also convert into just a daytime lounge. It basically converts into a second miniature living room and it becomes kind of like a two slide bunkhouse, but it only has the cost of a one slide bunkhouse. And that is one of its strongest aspects right there. That's something a lot of people love. But it's great too, if you get right down here and look under it, you see that there's all sorts of room for more totes and duffel bags. And did you notice over here in this like uh, dresser cabinet, because it's so darn deep, they went ahead and said, you know what? Load it up, do more of those storage totes. It just, it does a lot of things. Now we've really canvassed, I think the living room and the uh, kitchen areas pretty heavily so far. I just want to give you a good look at everything. On a bigger model like this in a Wildwood at Halet RV, we will often outfit it uh, with a 15,000 BTU air conditioner. Uh, I think that this is enough cubic foot of space, even though it's just one slide and it has that nice white exterior shedding off a lot of heat. I think that's a, uh, a thing that a lot of people are going to enjoy. Now, if you are an entertainment like TV focused family, that's another area where the Versa Lounge in, uh, you know, actual lounger mode is awesome because directly above that electric space heating fireplace, which is above the clutter cutting shoe garage right next to a coat hook hanger, smart, smart things that really don't cost a lot of money. This is where you would be mounting a television. Now, you could probably, you know, spend four, five, ten bucks on a flat mount TV. Or, uh, you know, you could get a, a $10 to $20 swing arm mount, you know, off Amazon. Or maybe we have some on the shelf here at Halo RV and get you going. What's nice is if you don't care about entertainment, it's still a nice, clean looking wall. And that thing down here, we call it a fireplace, this electric space heater, giving us tons of propane free heating is a very handy welcome thing. And notice how they're also including these handy little feed plugs. So if you do want to run, like if you plug in, because uh, this sound bar right here does have an HDMI plug on it. If you, uh, you know, plug in uh, like a, a Blu-ray player or you just have a, you know, fire stick or something, it's, it's just easy to run the HDMI plug up to the TV should you choose to add one. Something else I like is this hallway light is on a separate switch so you don't have to like monkey with the entire living room lighting if you just want more of a, a darkened private bed bath area. And this is another thing that's interesting on this model. The bathroom is up by the bedroom and it just between that, you know, big corner shower and the skylight and the power vent fan letting in a flood of light. Once again, it has really washed out the camera. There's just lots of natural ambient light coming in here. We do like to build these with the optional skylight above the shower. That is amazingly not a standard piece of equipment. And what's nice about that is you notice even a big guy like me can fit in there. And speaking of which, down here by the toilet, if you are a bigger fella or larger lady, you will get along in here just fine, little doggies, because that thing, you can literally like do a twinkle toe leg stretch routine and some twist them up bathroom yoga, and you're never gonna kick the wall there. Plus, if you notice over here against this far wall, they actually snuck a handy little linen cabinet or a place for some body washes and stuff in there. They've just really nailed it. But, <laughs> as if we haven't seen one thing do enough things, the bedroom, like you walk in at first and you're like, eh, okay. So it's a bed with a cabinet above and two hanging closets and some windows. Now, first of all, the windows do all open for airflow. That's a detail thing you gotta watch out for. And there are of course TV hookups against this wall here. 
but it's all the little details that go into this thing. For instance, I already mentioned the uh, breeze through windows, but these CPAP side stand pockets right here, you see how there's some household outlets inside the cabinet and they're all nicely trimmed out so it's not gonna be a splinter factory and the USB plugs are always out there for things like your phones or like let's say your phone has like a, a light that turns on when it's charging and that bothers you at night. You can keep it in that cabinet out of the way but always within reach. All Wildwoods have Camp Queens, however, <clears throat> they leave you tons of room. If you do upgrade six inches to a true queen, there's still room to walk around it and the struts for the easy lift on this plywood bed deck are no joke. You could go to a heavier bed and it will still handle it. Because as you see, I mean that thing gets right up out of the way. And you can even access the pass-through, but notice how it's completely separated from the, what I'm going to call, basically, you know, storage square dresser. Ah, that name's not good. I should probably work on that. That was a very bad name. <laughs> anyway, kind of like the totes under the uh, Versa Lounge. You've got these individual, uh, you know, cube organizer things here, which can act like dresser drawers. You could use them for kids' toys, socks, underwear. This could be your own personal bedroom dresser. There's still yet another shoe garage space under there. But around the corner, ignoring my sweaty running shoe because the camper's not level and this door wants to fall closed on me, look at this. There's more storage in the bedroom yet. Let me get over here a little bit closer. So, <laughs> I mean... What's this gonna be, overflow pantry space? What would you use this for? And that's actually something I'd love to know, guys. I'd really love your feedback. Do me a favor, leave us a little comment and tell us what do you like about this RV? What do you love about it? And what would you change? What one thing would you change given the opportunity? And as we step outside there, you know, it's a bit of a windy day, but you can see that door's not dancing in the breeze. You know, it's not dancing on the ceiling. <laughs> it uh, it holds itself in place. Nice little friction hinge door doing the uh, work for us. Outside speakers and a handy little TV plug. If you are so inclined, this does actually have a backer in the wall. There's actually a big chunk of uh, plywood back there. You could install an outside TV mount, but uh, I don't know. I'm spooked personally about drilling holes through my camper. I don't like to do that. I would just, personally, I'd just throw a table over here and set a TV on it and then remove it and stow it away in this huge front storage compartment you're going to see in a minute, but that's just me. And I like what they did here. They kind of have their own little spin on a mini camp kitchen. Cherokee and Wildwood both kind of came up with a similar concept and have a little bit of a different application on it. And I like them both, uh, you know, quite a bit. They both do some pretty cool things. This gives us that extra fridge space outside. You've got the uh, Suburban uh, grill, uh, well, not grill, griddle down here. And these things are great because, you know, if it's you're going to sear your flank steak, have some smash burgers or whatever tonight, they work fantastically. And if you need to, the, the little sprayer hose here, it's good for just like, you know, a quick little campsite cleanup. My daughter, uh, I would find a lot of use for that cabin with her with the bubble machine. She, you know, bubbles are fun. I still like to pop bubbles. Then again, I make no secret about the fact I still have a 10 year old sense of humor. <laughs> but um, I really am a Toys R Us kid, I guess. But also very handy for um, just general, you know, rinsing off a pan, anything like that. They're, they're multi-purpose, you get the idea. The stable steps over here, this is something that, uh, you know, a lot of things have started doing. It's almost, not worth talking too much about it anymore. It is the standard on here, so I don't want to just ignore it. Bigger entry handle. And another cool thing on this friction door, like it's easy to move by hand. They've got a nice rubber stopper right here, so it's not just going to whap against the side of the trailer. But you can see that even flinging it, it doesn't smash itself shut. They're just really good, handy things like that. As we work our way up here to the front storage compartment, you see the little simple side mount solar prep plug. If you do uh, any sort of off-grid boondock camping, uh, I personally think a second battery, because we include the first battery for you at no additional charge here at Halid RV, but a second battery and uh, uh, a simple side mount solar prep thing, that will give you potentially well over a week, if not close to two weeks, of boondock dry camp time. And you can see this is a wide open, big pass-through, but I love the premeditation here. Like the top thing that you're looking at that is a twist handle for the strong arm stabilizer jacks we'll see in a second now this is also something that i like right here it's what we call the wildwood cordless jack system so wildwoods have a power jack option we don't usually do them here at halid rv it's extra money and you actually lose stability and they go slower and they're noisy and they eat your battery 
I don't like any of those things at all. So these come with the little drill bit adapter that you can use to put your jacks up and down like a uh, NASCAR pit crew. And you see that yellow bar? We'll get a better look at it on a rear jack. That is the strong arm stabilizer jack. If you want this thing to feel like it is on a concrete pad, like on a house foundation, that is something you are really going to enjoy. I do not believe there is a more stable trailer within this class and category. That is something where Wildwood absolutely has the market beat. Every camper, you know, in this class here at Halitz, we have Wildwood, Cherokee, J Flight, Catalina. They all do some things better than the others. That's why I carry all of them. They're like over there's Gray Wolf. It's gorgeous. It's cool. But there's stuff this Wildwood does that doesn't. There's stuff that does this doesn't. Every brand is the best for a different reason. That's why we have so many of them here at Halitz to help you really, you know, be able to choose and have variety right here at one place. You want to cross compare and shop the market? You don't have to go driving around and spend a weekend doing it. You can spend an afternoon with us and leave here with a PhD in camping, my friend. Like here's a cool thing. This is called Tough Coat. Uh, if you get up here, it's it's harder to see on camera, but in person, if you get up here, you uh, check out the uh, some of the aluminum, you'll actually find where it has an anti-scratch coating applied to it. That's cool stuff. Cherokee does that too, but some other brands don't. There's things that they all do that I like. The uh, little things like the little uh, plug buddy up here on the tongue and the safety chain hook so that when you are unhitched, your, uh, you know, your stuff isn't just laying down in the dirt. You don't have to wrap it around the tongue. It's premeditated. Stuff has a place. A simple battery disconnect so that when she's in storage, you don't have um, phantom drain on the battery. You don't have that 12 volt fridge eating up the battery. We have magnet holdbacks on all the exterior baggage doors to make life simple and easy for you. And Wildwood does have that uh, sectionalized, heated, and closed accessibility. And I love that name, Accessibility. The cool thing is here, this is not like new. This is proven stuff here. Instead of um, that plastic corrugated belly material that everybody seems to have, or the honeycomb thermal pocketed stuff, this is four by eight sheets of molded removable plastic. So if you need to drop a panel to service it, you can do that without having to tape a Stanley knife and cut a hole in your underbelly enclosure and then basically duct tape it back up when you're done. That's about the only way to do some small scale service on a normal underbelly. Wildwoods are fully serviceable. And the good news, we haven't really had much of a reason to have to get down here and it is forced air heated. Now we were already in the Versa bunk room, but I mentioned that cargo door. That was a, actually, that was the suggestion. I got to see the prototype of this when I did my original Wildwood factory uh, video tour, uh, I don't know, a year and a half ago or so by now. But um, I walked in here and I was like, wow, guys, this is great. You've done some cool stuff here. You know, it can flip up, down, inside, and out, every which way but loose. But while the slide's closed, you have this big wasted space nobody can get to. Put a cargo door right there and then make it deadbolt so that nobody can take your kids in your cargo. And they went, huh, that's a shockingly good idea, Josh the RV nerd. And I said, why thank you, I agree. <laughs> I don't know if that's exactly how it went, but that's how I remember it. Anyway, backup camera ready. Uh, 3 8 uh, walkable roof decking with 16 inch on center studs in the roof and sidewalls. 12 inch on center floor studs with 5 8 tongue and groove floor decking. And most of what I just described to you also pretty much exactly describes things like Catalina, Cherokee, J Flight here at Halet RV. So it really is how they decorate and uh, outfit their RV that, that separates these guys because they're, they're built in very similar fashions. That's why they have similar size, similar weight, similar layouts. It just depends on which version and which interpretation of uh, you know various floor plan aspects kind of speaks a little more loudly to you. And I told you we get a better look at that strong arm and then I forgot to get a better look at it. So we're gonna jump here real quick before we wrap ourselves up. You see that little T-handle? When this jack comes down, even with just a hand tightened crank of that T-handle or if you're using that long rod that I showed you in the pass through earlier, it will prevent so much shifting and jostling as those little you know energetic bodies back in the bunk room bounce around so you know even if they're getting up and down to use a bathroom at night it is not going to cause you up in your bedroom to get jostled or if they're sleeping 
and you come and go because you want to stay up and be an adult and hang around the campfire and have a drink, well, they're going to continue to sleep because you're also not jostling them. These things are awesome. Or, frankly, if you're like my mother, if you're super motion sensitive, you're going to love these. You are going to love these. Now, the reason I'm making such a big deal talking about them, you lose these when you go to the power jack option, and I just couldn't imagine losing extra campsite stability. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. This makes the most sense. So if you are seeking a mobile, agile, versatile camper, I don't know if there's one more versatile than the Versa Lounge Versa Bunk 29 V-Bud here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. So give us a call. We do it all. Hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, RV delivery, and everything in between. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Haylet camping, everyone. Looking forward to seeing you soon.